Welcome to those of you that have joined us for today's webinar, The Secrets of the IRS 990. We are happy that Kathleen is giving us her time and skills and gifts as she shares different pieces of grant writing. So we'll start here in a minute or two. I think we'll have others joining us, but welcome. Glad you're here with us. If you wanna find the chat box, you are welcome to type in your geographic location. It's good to see where people are located. Uh, Kathleen and I actually happen to be in the same place. We're both in Wichita, Kansas. And I've met her through my work with AHA Process. Kentucky, thank you. Lido, Tennessee. Hi, Jerry. Good to see you. Good to see you, ma'am. Kathleen, I bet. Oh, there's another Tennessee, Turtle Town, Tennessee. It's great. I love learning about new places. Kathleen, I see it's the top of the hour. We may have others joining us as you go through, but I'd like to give you time to provide the information and then we'll have a Q&A. Okay. So if you want to get started, that'd be great. Okay. So um, I'm going to sh share with you my secrets of the IRS 990. And um, I just get so excited about it. And people say, you're excited about an IRS form? I said, yes, because it has all of this great information there that I need to, as a grant writer to uh, be successful. So in my presentation here, the red is how I use it or just like sometimes just my personal opinion on, on how I uh, use the information. So the IRS 990, you know, my dad always used to say, you know, there's two things you have to do in life. You have to die and you have to pay taxes, right? Well, in the nonprofit world, we you know we don't pay taxes, but we still have to report and talk to the IRS. And many, many years, you know, like, I don't know, it was like, you know, 10 years ago, the IRS changed the rules. Before, if you had, you know, less than 50,000 a year, you didn't do anything. But the IRS changed the rules and said, hey, you at least have to wave to us to say that you're still a nonprofit and do a postcard. So um, the IRS wants to know who is out there is a viable organization. So nonprofits have to file a, a, this uh, Form 990 in addition to uh, foundations who we get money from ha have to file the uh, IRS uh, 990. So there are a few organizations that don't have to file. Um, these would be faith-based organizations, state institutions, for example, state schools um, don't. Uh, nonprofits that don't uh, are not tax exempt. And there are some of those um, out there. They may be a nonprofit with the state, but, the, but they don't, they're not tax exempt. So they don't have to file this 990. And there's a few others in there. So if you're curious, you can go to the IRS uh, website and, and list it there. Where I usually start is, um, it used to be called Foundation Center, and, and then it was um, sold to an organization called Candid. And, but it's a free search. And so I just type in Candid 990 Finder, and uh, it goes to this document right here. And then you can open up uh, the 990 free, for free. Um, how I also use this, though, is I use it when I've identified the foundation that I want to look up. I capture what that, it's called the uh, EIN number. Every organization has an EIN number, which they use to pay employee taxes, that kind of thing. I, I collect that information because sometimes Candid doesn't have the most current IRS 990. Now they're they're pretty good. You you can, but you know if you open it up and it's a, a filing from two years ago, there might be one that's a little more current. And so I go right uh, to the source. I go right to the IRS 
uh, website and, and I look for tax exempt organization search. Now, the reason you have to have that EIN number is you'd be surprised how many organizations have the same name and you'd be searching through 20 organizations that have the same name. But that EIN number is a unique number to, um, to a foundation, to, to everyone. Everyone has a unique EIN number. So I can look at them, the most current filing with the IRS uh, right through the um, IRS uh, website. All right, so this, this 990, you know, what am I looking for when I look at a 990? Is that very first page of it, it's going to tell me, uh, first of all, there usually is a phone number. I mean, every time I've called it, nobody's answered, but, you know, it is there, right? Um, but I'm on this first page, I'm really looking for the, the assets that, that a foundation has. How much money do they have uh, in their assets? So the example here, I have, uh, they have, you know, $10.6 million in theirs. Now, it's important every year to check the 990 for a foundation because life happens, right? Changes happen in our own lives. It happens the same in foundations. Um, sometimes uh, if there's a, sometimes there might be a huge increase. You know, one year I looked at a, a foundation and it had $2 million in there and the next year it had 16 million. Well, what happened was it was a company foundation. The company sold. And when they sold, they put their, some of their um, profits into their foundation. Uh, sometimes you'll see um, it, they have zero assets. And you're like, well, but they still gave money away, right? What's happening there? Well, if it's a company uh, foundation, uh, they may not keep any assets in the foundation, but they may make a donation from the profits from the year into their foundation, and then they'll hand out the funds from there. So you don't always freak out if you see zero assets um, and, and they still might be giving money, uh, awarding money. This is how I use it. Um, I look and see who is on the board of directors uh, for this foundation. I mean, there's just like a nonprofit, right? You have to have a board of, of directors. And um, a lot of times uh, trustees are paid and that, that's fine. Uh, so here's how I use it is I will make a list of the, of the uh, trustees that are on this board of directors and I'll send it to my board and say, Hey, do you know anyone here? Do you know Rhonda Vess? And my board, I may have a board member said, well, yeah, I play cards with Rhonda Vess. I'm like, well, great. Well, will you tell her that we're applying? Will you uh, write her a note and put it in our application directly to her to encourage her to fund us? Because it's about relationships, 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 right? So that's how I, I, I use this. I use it as a tool to see who's the trustees and is anyone on my board know someone on their board? Um, I also use that information to address my uh, letter to them. If I'm gonna send a letter of inquiry, um, then and there's only two trustees there, I'll address it to both of them. Dear Mr. Smith and Mrs. Jones. If there's more than one, then I say, um, Dear Mr. Smith and trustees. Now, this is, why is this important? Because it tells them that I have done my homework. I have looked, I, I know, I know who they are, right? If you put to whom it may concern, that's not gonna get you what you need is you need someone to, to say, look, I've done my homework. I know what you care about and I'm a good fit, right? So you wanna match. It just says, I, I've done my homework. I, I know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so um, this is my personal opinion, right? Okay, so there's this box that they can check that says that a foundation only gives to pre-selected organizations and does not accept um, any, any new request. Okay, I personally choose to ignore that. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I just ignore it. And I send a letter anyway. Sometimes it's just a letter of introduction, like, hey, I'd like to introduce my organization to you. But more than often, I, I just go ahead and apply. And 
I've only, in, in all of my years, all of my, all these years I've been writing, I've only gotten one letter back that said, we only give to pre-selected organizations. Now, maybe they do and I don't get a response back, but sometimes you get funded and then you look on this box and you said, well, you said you didn't, but I sent you a letter and you gave me money anyway. So I, over the years, I have just chose to, um, to send letters to people anyway. Um, the, um, sometimes it will tell you, you know, where to send the application. So in this case, the first, um, on the first page, this foundation there, uh, they have a PO box, but later on in the application in this uh, part um, 15, they say, send all letters to Bob Hughes. So if you send it to the PO box, but Mr. Hughes is the one that really needs to receive the application. So it's another way of paying attention and doing your homework and understanding what this foundation wants. Okay, so um, the, they, the, um, the 990 gives instructions, like how do we want people to apply? Sometimes they'll say, see our own online application. Or sometimes it says, send a general letter a, a request. Sometimes it says an application is required and you have to write and ask for an application. Uh, sometimes it might say an application should, should be submitted with one additional copy. So, wow. So if, if, if people just don't look at the 990, then you don't know the instructions, right? And so this gives you a, a better a step forward than someone that might not be reading and paying attention. So uh, the 990 uh, will often tell you that what, what to do. It will also often tell you the deadline. Sometimes it just says no deadline, but sometimes it has very specific deadlines, December 1st. Okay, so if you send it December 15th, you're out because they've already accepted all the, all the, the letters that they're going to accept. Um, sometimes it's, it also will give you very specific instructions like we only award in these states or we only award in these counties or we only award to um, uh, nonprofits that meet this very specific uh, code of, of um, status with the IRS. So there's all kinds of information in there that tells you sometimes who, who, who is eligible to apply. All right, this is the real, the real meat of why you need to look at, look at a 990 is people will often say, how do I know how much money to ask for, right? We don't wanna leave money on the table, right? We want to maximize our ask, but we don't wanna over ask either because then, then it's gonna get thrown out. So in this example here, you can see they did they did um, two thousand dollars or they did sixty thousand dollars to one. Okay, so when I look at this, I would say I would ask for ten thousand dollars. They have a couple in here. It's not the lowest. It's not the highest. If it's my first time ask, I I would I would go towards the middle. So um, this this is this is the gold right here. Is is this part right here? And it also um, can tell you, like, if I found another organization that was similar to mine, I could, sometimes it, the purpose of the grant, sometimes they're kind of descriptive on what they funded. A lot of times they're not. They'll just say unrestricted like this. But uh, sometimes you can kind of gather what people are, or what, what they're interested in funding too. Um, other tips and tricks I use, uh, if I'm looking at a, a funder that funds nationally, I'll do a word search for, for the word Kansas. Like I'm in Kansas, so that's what I'm looking for. I'll look back over a couple of 990s to see if they've ever funded anything in Kansas. Uh, it's kind of a hint if, if they've never funded anything at all, ever project in the state that I live in, it, you know, it, it might be a, a waste of time for me. Um, sometimes, Sometimes these 990s are huge. It, you know, if you look at the Ford Foundation, their 990 is over 200 pages. You're like, oh, that's a lot. You know, in the in the word search, I'll do I'll do the word grants or uh, contributions, and I'll pull up those 
you know, where they gave the money to pretty fast that way versus trying to go through all 200 pages there. So those are my tips, my tricks. Um, and I'd love to hear from you if you have any experience with 990s or just in general, how is grant writing going through your, your journey to fund AHA initiatives, Bridges Out of Poverty. Kathleen, how successful have you been? Do you track <clears throat> kind of where the money's coming from versus like with, through the 990, those kinds of things? Uh, say, say it again, Lynn. By using this tip, this trick, do you know how successful you've been as far as uh, grant money coming your way? Well, um, so last year I uh, won, I was awarded through all the grants, I, I about um, 1.4 million last year. So, so yes, but yeah. yes. <laughs> Okay. You've said it over and over in your series of grant writing tips and hints, relationships mm -hmm. continue to really be what's driving your work. Um, so as you're saying, do, our, do your homework is what I heard you say today. Make sure that you're trying to glean names of people, making mm -hmm. uh, connections finding kind of a, a way through some of the maze of all of the applications that are being sent in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's not everything, but you know, it helps for sure, right? You know, especially those family foundations, it, once you get to know family foundations and you develop a relationship with them, then, then, then it's not just a one and done thing. You can get funding from them year after year after year. And people say, well, you know, don't you hate grants because it just, you know, it's one year and it's over. Well, there's that, right? But then there's also, like, we've developed a relationship with, with many family foundations. And so they have given to us year after year after year. And um, that's a form of sustainability, you know, so. Any questions? You're welcome to open your mic and ask. You want to put something in the chat? We'll watch that as well. Not seeing anything. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Anne. Yes. I think. The time that Kathleen has put into putting these together has been helpful. Today is just giving you one more thing to think about. And I, I believe, Kathleen, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I believe we'll do a few others. I have a few yeah. other ideas I could share. Yeah. yeah. We'll do some other webinars in the future. Yeah. Hello. I, I was wondering, was there also a webinar on how to write grants? No. You did, Kathleen, you've done two others and one really did give kind of a letter, an outline of a letter to send mm -hmm. in for grants. Mm -hmm. Remind me of the other one. So yes, and if you need me to, I'm gonna take your, um, email me, I'll put my email in that and I can send you the, meetings the recordings of those so i did like how to write a letter of inquiry which if if there's not like a specific um form that a foundation wants you to follow those specific questions and if it just says send me a letter then that's one of them that i did and i have a very you know for i used getting ahead as a, um, my example there so uh, lynn can send you that recording and those examples and I think that that should really help you, you know, with the format of what you should do. Yeah. And then if you don't know how to good define grants, um, go to your uh, local library, and they have a person there that's been trained as a as the teacher, as the educator for that. It's about a half hour class. You can sit down with someone 
and he can show you how to use um, the free sources that they have. It used to be called Foundation Center, and like I said, now it's called Candid, and that's free. You don't want to pay for it. It's very expensive, but it's free at the library, and so you know, go, go there, you know, go there every week, you know, take a half hour every week, do grant searches, send yourself three or four, submit, you know, write that, use that letter of inquiry that I gave you, send it off and just keep trying and trying and trying. Um, Sharna, I think has a, a question about some key points that should be in a grant. Kathleen, you can answer that. I would say it depends on what they're looking for, correct? As far as right. what you put into it. May be quiet, and you can answer that question. Um, so, if you if you review um, again, go back to my webinar that I already did on letter of inquiry. You know, there's always the need statement in there. There's always how you're going. You know, what you can do to address that need, and about your organization, and ask for the order. You know, and so uh, there is a very specific um, way to ask for if you ha just have a letter of inquiry. If you have not seen or heard the previous webinars that Kathleen has provided for us, send me an email again and I will send those to you. I don't know that we've put them on the website. Uh, well, I don't think we put them on the website, but I think they may be in a blog. So I'll check mm. that as well. No, oh. Anne is saying, have you seen, Anne is saying that the new candid version does not seem to be as reliable as the old one. Ah. <laughs> I think it's just different. I wish they, you know, can't they leave anything alone? <laughs> you know, the website changes, you know, all of these forms change or whatever, but I don't know. I think with the, with the new candid, I think you, you have to use a lot more keyword searches um, then you used to be able, you know, you kind of, I don't know, you keep changing it. But it is the source for um, figuring it out. Anyone else in the, either open your mic or if you would like to put a question in the chat. We are recording this and I will send this out to all of you that attended today and you are welcome to share with others. We want to make sure that uh, everyone can hear it but would need to have information. Oh. Uh, Anne is saying, did you say part, wait, 14, is that what it is? Line three is where grants are listed. 15, I'm not good with my Roman numerals. You see the chat, Kathleen? Um, not really sure of the, of the number. You, it, it tends to be down at the bottom. And you can just do, in search, you can just do, um, put in the word grants. or um, So you can try that. If nothing else, keep scrolling down the bottom. <laughs> Is that something else that when you go to the library and ask them, they could show you? They could probably show you that, yeah. I, but just really just keep practicing, you know, just start looking at them, you know, when you identify, you know, I would, if, if you were just starting, like just starting, you know, go to the library, learn how to do that, pick out five grants, foundations, you know, and don't overwhelm yourself. Just pick out five and try those five. And, and then, then go back the next week and pick five more. You know, that's how, how just don't be, don't, don't overwhelm yourself. And then when you get one back, you do the money dance, and then you can go back and say, wow, this, this template really worked. This worked and use that one. Just keep tweaking it.
Okay. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Last questions? Thank you all for being with us today. And as I said, we recorded this, so I will send it out. You can review it if you would like to. Kathleen, thank you so much for spending time with us. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Thanks, everyone.